Now let's understand how dot i lock method works. This is also very similar to the dot lock method. Only difference is instead of taking the index names, instead of taking index names, dot i lock takes in the index positions and column positions instead of column names. Right here in this case, both index position and index name is the same. But imagine if there was a name here instead of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, there was some name here. For df.lock to work, you need to pass in the names of the indexes to work, right? But in case of ilock, you should always refer to the position number irrespective of what the index value is. Same goes for column positions. Instead of column names, you need to pass in the column position. So account length is present in position 1. Area code is present in position 2. Because of this, all these four columns got selected. Now, this is one way. Another way to do this is, if you are getting a continuous selection of rows or continuous selection of columns, you can use this notation, the colon notation as well. This will also work. Quite simple, right? So, both dot lock and dot i lock are the most often used functions to select a subset of your data frame. Now, let's look at one more option to select data and that is dot at and dot i at. Unlike the dot lock and dot i lock, using these two, you can select just one cell at a time. For dot i at, you need to pass in the location, the positions of the row and the column of the cell that you want to select. Likewise, for dot at, you need to pass in the index name or number as well as the column name or number of the cell that you want to select. Just one item you can select. Clear, right? So, what all we have seen? We have seen the dot notation, we have seen the lock, the i lock, at, and i at. These are the different methods to select subset of data in Pandas.